Of Unicorns, welcome to my new studio. Today I was going through my old drawings of my original characters from the Mugen universe. You can see the video about that right here. And I found a perfect candidate to draw again for this little challenge while I chat with you about the importance of original characters. <laughs> Just a quick update, you will be able to see the 2D version of myself helping you out in my next lessons. In today's video, I'm going to use this old drawing and redraw it as a new character, well, a new form of the same character. And this is a 10 year old character I drew in 2008. And this has just blew me away when I calculated how many years has passed since I actually started drawing manga. And this is my first ever, of course, it, today it looks like a complete failure, but I'm not going to regret or like make um, pretend that I never drew like this because it would be ridiculous. And don't hide your old works. Use them as a badge of honor. Use them as something that you will be proud of one day when you see how much you improved and how much your style changes through the years. You don't have to have one style. You can have many different styles, but the important thing is to be happy with your progress. Um, the reason why my old work looks as it does is because I drew this when I had no idea what manga was. I was just starting off as somebody who was in love with manga, but I lived in a world without internet or manga comics available anywhere, so I had to scrunch up any knowledge of manga and anime I could from borrowing CDs, um, borrowing scanned manga and everything like that there was such a low level of any sort of a reference i could use so this is one of the reasons why i didn't understand anything about the manga aesthetics and how to draw it we didn't have any sort of a manga drawing books in my country or anything like that so i literally started out from zero 10 years ago and i was fresh out of fashion school so i had no idea on proper line art on on proper anatomy regarding manga. Um, at fashion school I was taught that uh, proper anatomy had elongated uh, limbs and uh, proper human anatomy. I didn't realize that in manga mostly character had like six head uh, height and uh, they were actually a combination of a cutesy doll-like face with a uh, six a head tall body which is when you look at the reason why completely logical but at the time I didn't know that the general anatomy of a Japanese person was influenced to create this style since in my neck of the woods we are all pretty tall people so I kept drawing tall people as the result and inadvertently we all draw parts of our own anatomy in our own artwork. Uh, you need to go and study for a long time uh, on the topic of manga. You need to look at a lot of references and a lot of resources and realize why certain things on manga characters look the way they do. Um, for example, why why little Japanese uh, characters always have a bit of crooked legs, uh, always so um, skinny and short, and just this general aesthetics is very common in the Asian world, but since I am not from Asia, this came a little bit different to me, and it took some time it took a really huge learning curve to actually understand this anatomy, understand this aesthetics and what the rules were. And of course I had to do it all without any sort of a tutorial book or anything like that. All of my knowledge that I collected I poured into my classes, into my students, into my books. So I ended up learning most of this stuff on my own. 
to just realize and understand the core of manga style. I didn't want to just trace over existing manga drawings. I wanted to understand what makes manga style a manga style. Why the shapes are the way they are, why the fashion looks the way it does, why the anatomy is what it is. And I managed to find all of the answers I was looking for. Uh, I spent 10 years researching Japan and manga and anime world and I fell in love with it and I'm so happy that I know most of the answers right now and right here but it took some time uh, for example I didn't know how to properly even do line arts but today line arts are my favorite thing to do I didn't know which tools to use um, a lot of tools were not even available to me or I didn't use uh, I didn't even know which tools Tools were the proper tools no matter how simple the tools ended up being um, I also didn't know how to properly draw out panels in a form that it was uh, printable in a Japanese newspaper because this is something that's so far off from my own world and kind of not that important to be perfectly honest so there is so many things that I had to research um, then if it's not applicable to the Western world and kids drawing manga in the Western world I would just erase it from the curriculum and try to find something that is more approachable and more usable in the Western world and there is also a big difference when you see a Western mangaka and a Japanese manga of course, there are so many worldwide authors who are mangakas, but they are so different in varying in styles and there is a huge reason behind it. Well, two reasons actually. Um, the first reason is, and the both reasons actually have the uh, something to do with the line art. Um, lines in Japanese culture are very important, almost sacred. Uh, lines in Japanese culture are used to emphasize the beauty of calligraphy, the beauty of the drawings. So lines are extremely important in their culture. That's why they always practice a lot of calligraphy and they have it in their very own uh, everyday writing so that's something that we here in the western world don't really practice that much that's why their um, line work is so different from our own the second reason why their line work is so different from our own is because they write from right to left while in the western world we write from left to right and the way we write defines the way we look at things defines the way paintings are made, defines the way we have an aesthetics because a Japanese person will look at a drawing or a painting from right to left instinctively as well as we from the Western world we will go and see artwork from left to right and sometimes we will get confused why certain objects in the drawings are not in the place where we would expect them to be and this is something that we don't mind especially with art because it's surprising us in, in a sort of a way while this same drawing is completely normal thing in the asian world in japanese uh viewers eyes so this is definitely the two main points that create such a confusion when a western person wants to try to draw manga some people have it easier to figure out the line work some people uh, have it way harder for example in manga aesthetics there is no such thing as a pretty line that is ending in a pointy tip like when you swish or flick <laughs> the line and make it just end up with a beautiful pointy tip it's something that in Japanese culture is considered unfinished a beautiful line in manga is actually finished by pulling a line uh, with your pencil and then just stopping your arm stopping your hand so that the line is almost finished in a dot of a sort these like imagine how many lines a drawing has and imagine how many lines you have put in your artwork that are ending with a beautiful pointy tip and somehow you will realize that your drawing is inspired by manga but doesn't really look exactly like it 
these types of lines and these types of culture differences are the reason why, but it doesn't make your manga any less of a manga. Even though that Japanese people like to claim that manga is their own um, unique product and calling other countries manga a different name, it's all manga. It's all inspired by manga and it shouldn't be divided into subclasses if you ask me personally. Anyways, I wanted to paint this drawing with some Copic markers for a change because 10 years ago I had no idea what Copic markers were and I just wanted to update this drawing. As you can see, I just try to use different sorts of lines combined with the colors and do some cell shading like I always do because cell shading is a perfect mix between manga and anime aesthetics. Cell shading is when you take an area, cover it with color and then just use uh, a darker color of the same type to shade the areas that are like in the dark or maybe just shade the, the little pointy tips of the hair and do the minimalistic type of shading. Um, there's always this opportunity that you can use with markers or any type of watercolors that you can blend, uh, give them some blushy cheeks and stuff like that. So it's always preferred if you could like upgrade the um, cell shading with some blending as well and of course in the end you can use the white gel pen or any type of white paint but anyways let's get back to the main part of the story of this video um, so yeah I realized during this past 10 years that my art style has evolved immensely I figured out the answers to what is manga how to achieve this look how to achieve this aesthetic or be actually not even like how to achieve it completely to mimic Japanese art don't get me wrong I just wanted to achieve it in a way that I am happy with it and that's perfectly fine uh, you should all be grateful for uh, having so much work done on your art no matter what level your art is on don't give yourself hard time to just tell yourself your art is not good enough your art will be good enough uh, if you are happy with it and this is the way to be happy with it it's very simple original characters are there to help you have so much fun immerse yourself into your work into your comic book into your stories that you will be able to uh, level up in the art of drawing just by having fun. This is what actually happened to me. 10 years ago, I created characters that were so much fun to make that I had to share them with my friends, that I had to share them with my students. We all collabed. Nobody was obsessing about if they had talent or not, if they had a good style or not. No, we all had fun. We would sit around the classroom, brainstorm and think of the stories we wanted to create little comics about, whether it's like a romantic story, a funny story. Uh, sometimes people would challenge each other's characters to a duel and then ending it up with a food fight or something ridiculous like that. And trust me, once when you have friends you can draw for, everything becomes instantly fun. You don't even have to draw for friends or online friends, but you do have that opportunity if you go to the link down, down below or above in the video that I shared in the beginning of the video. But anyways, when you have your original characters that you want to create, you will have so much fun because you can uh, do with those characters so many things. You can explore their worlds, you can create their stories, like personal stories, maybe new characters they meet. You can create entire um, epic adventures and everything like that. Just remember one important thing about creating characters and that's not to make them too perfect, too beautiful, too overpowered. Nobody likes characters who are like that, trust me. Like if you have a character everybody's in love with, they're so perfect, they're flawless, those kinds of characters get boring real fast. So that's the only thing that I would recommend not to do when you try to create a character of your own. Anyways, the most productive 
part of my life as a manga illustrator for me personally was this time when I had original character drawings and comics to make to laugh at with my friends and just have amazing fun either by myself or with my friends and with my original characters. I really hope this was a educational video for you. I really hope you will get inspired and create your own character and apply for the Mugen Magical School. And let's compare these two drawings with 10 years apart. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you would like to learn how to draw manga please check out my book Manga Crash Course available in 4 different languages as well as my latest book Manga Crash Course Fantasy.